The following yield strength, grain diameter, and heat treatment time for grain growth data was gathered for an iron specimen that was heated to 750 degrees Celsius. Using this data, compute the yield strength of a specimen that's been heated to 750 degrees Celsius for one hour. Assume a value of 2 for n, the grain diameter exponent. This problem can be broken down into a number of steps. Step 1, we're going to use the data provided to determine values of d0 and k, the constants from the grain growth expression. Step 2, we'll use these values to compute the value of d, the grain size, after the heat treatment given in the problem, which is 750 degrees Celsius for one hour. Step 3, from the data provided, we'll also determine sigma0 and k sub y, the constants from the Hall-Petch equation. Finally, step 4, we will calculate the value of the yield strength using the Hall-Petch equation, incorporating d, the grain size value determined in step 2, and sigma0 and k sub y, the Hall-Petch coefficients values determined in step 3. So let's get started. Step 1, from the data provided, we need to determine d0 and k. Well, here's our grain growth expression, d squared minus d0 squared equals kt. We have two unknowns and right now just one equation. So we need to rewrite this with two equations to solve for our two unknowns. Again, plugging in values from the problem statement, that's not hard to do. And there's a number of ways that we can solve for these two unknowns. Perhaps the simplest is to go ahead and divide the two equations by another. The left hand sides of the equations divide, the right hand sides divide. That allows hours to cancel and more importantly, k to cancel. Now we only have one unknown, d0. The best way to solve this, we need to take and do cross multiplication. So this whole term gets multiplied by this term. This term gets multiplied by this whole term up top here. Let's write that out. We can now simplify this to and finally 5.5 d0 squared is equal to 0 0.00022 square millimeters. Therefore, d0, our first grain growth coefficient that we need to solve for is equal to 0 0.006325 millimeters. Now that we know d0, we can simply plug back in and solve for k. And we find that k is equal to 7.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And it has the units of millimeter squared per hour. Now we can move on to step two. Step two tells us use these values from step one to compute the value of D, the grain size, after the new heat treatment. So we can go ahead and rearrange our grain growth expression to solve for just D. D should be equal to the square root of KT plus D naught squared. Plugging in the values from before, we see that we are given the following expression. And punching that into our calculator, we find that our grain size is 0.01 Zero eight six millimeters. Now we're ready for step three. From the data provided, we need to determine values for sigma naught and k sub y, the two Hall-Petch equation coefficients. Again, Hall-Petch equation is given here, and since we have two unknowns, and right now we have one equation, we're going to need to write two equations to solve for our two unknowns. Well, that's easy to do with the information given in the problem statement. We can write them as follows. And to solve for them, there's a number of ways we can do it. Perhaps the easiest is to take the first equation and to subtract from it the second equation. 
The reason this is convenient is because the sigma knots are going to cancel out. We're left with 50 megapascals on the left hand side of the equation equals zero plus ky times 2.127 inverse millimeters to the one-half. 2.127 millimeters to the negative one-half power. If we go ahead and divide both sides by 2.127 millimeters to the negative one-half power, we find that k sub y is equal to 23.51 megapascals times square root meters. Now they have k sub y, we can plug it into either of the two equations above to solve for sigma naught. Let's do so. We find that sigma naught should equal 340 megapascals minus 23.51 megapascal root millimeters multiplied by 6.3 two four millimeters to the negative one half power. When we plug all these numbers in, I find that sigma naught equals one hundred and ninety one megapascals. So now we have a value for sigma naught and k sub y. With these values we've now completed step three and we can continue to step four which states Calculate the value of sigma y, the yield strength, using the Hall-Petch equation by incorporating the value of the grain size that determined in step two, and the Hall-Petch coefficients, which we determined in step three. Again, Hall-Petch equation is shown here. When we plug in the values from the previous steps, we have this. Punching this into our calculator, we find that the yield strength for this alloy after this heat treatment should be 416.9 megapascals.